Hi, I'm David Parker, and I'm here with my fellow Visio MVP, Chris Roth. Now, the great thing about Visio is you can have shaped data with it, but it can get a little bit tedious typing in all those values and all of those shapes. Chris, can you tell us a quicker way of doing it? Yes, David. Visio 2010 has a wonderful feature called data linking that will eliminate all of your rekeying worries. So let's jump right in and see how we can go about doing this. Now, often the shape data fields are just behind the shape and you don't see them, but I've created a shape that actually displays the values. You can see we've got a concept notion and we're going to translate that into several different languages. So the shape data for this shape actually shows up in the shape and it'll make it easier for us to see when a link has actually mm -hmm. occurred. So just imagine we're, we're creating some flashcards for a conference where people are coming from several different countries and we just want to have a few pages of common words so they can all exchange languages, so to speak. So first thing we need to do is head over to the data tab and we want to link data to shapes. But before I do that, I'll show you this, our data source, which is in Excel and you can see we've got Several, I just called them concepts, generic, mm -hmm. it could be a numbers or clues or anything, and they're translated into English, German, and French. So back on the data page, data tab, we'll say link data to shapes to get the process rolling. And you can import data from all sorts of different sources. I'll use Excel in this example, but it could just as well have been Microsoft Access, SharePoint lists, SQL Server, or OLEDB or ODBC data sources. As long as you have the drivers, you can get the data in. So we'll hit next, and I believe I have my Excel spreadsheet saved in a recent path. We'll do that. There's only one set of data in there. I'll hit next. We'll take all the columns, all the rows. And again, people, when you have time on your own, you can inspect each screen, but I'm gonna fly through them mostly. Right now, the most important one is Every data record needs a unique key so that Visio mm -hmm. can tell it apart. In this case, it's concept. The leftmost column will function just fine. So Visio did very good guessing the defaults. We'll just accept that. Hit finish, and you'll see we've got an external data window pops up. Yeah. This is showing us the data we just saw in Excel, and it looks like we're on our way. It looks like way. an Excel spreadsheet. Looks You've like got we're on our way. embedded. Okay. We can't edit anything in here, but what we can do is drag this information, drag one of these rows onto a shape. And you'll notice the nice blue and black highlighting that tells us we're creating a data link. And once we do that, you'll see a little chain link icon that shows us this record is linked to this shape. So not only did we create a link, but you can see the values were populated here. Yeah. And if you speak French, you can verify that un or on is in fact represents well. the concept of one. So you can drag directly onto shapes, but you can also do something like where you select a shape in the stencil, and we'll make sure our translator shape mm -hmm. is selected. That's nice that we can drag individual records on there, and I can even replace this record, and Visio will say, would you like to overwrite that record? And I will, and now we have the concept two. But what if we have lots of shapes to link up? Is there, is there a better way to do it? Like I said, we're making a bunch of flashcards, so we're gonna have several of these on each page. Sometimes you have this scenario where you have partial data in the shapes. Mm -hmm. So in this case, someone's actually set out the flashcards, nice yeah. in order, and typed in the concept. So we got one, two, three, four, goes woof, and so mm -hmm. on. And those serve as IDs that can be linked to the data automatically because this is enough information. I can imagine uh, maybe someone's gone through an office and wrote the... Uh, ID of the desks, and ID of the desks and or ID of the office onto each one, but they yeah. didn't fill out all the data. Once the, once the IDs are in place, so to speak, we can do automatic linking. So let's see how that works. We'll just click right up here. Well, there you go, yeah, automatically button. link button. I think that's what we were looking for. We'll click on that and Visio says, oh, do you want to link to all shapes on the page? I do, it'll probably ignore the title blocks because they don't have any shape data anyway. We'll hit next. And the data column that we want to link is the concept because the concept is the data key in this case. And mm -hmm. we don't want to link based on shape text, we want to link based on the value that's been typed into Thank the concept you. field. So we'll hit next, finish, and everything is miraculously filled out automatically. I can vouch for the German, <laughs> but you'll notice these two didn't get anything, and that's because they have concepts that aren't in the data set. And one other thing I'm noticing now that I'm zoomed in is that, uh, wait a second, mm -hmm. Just let me, is we've got Ketze, Hund, and Wesser, which is not correct, German. So if we pop back over to the data set and quickly remove those umlauts, those double, 
dots above each one. I'm surprised at you. Yes. And correctly spell this, we can come back into our drawing and do a data refresh. I'll just say refresh all, and a data is changed here, and it's updated in the shape. And Katze, Hund, and Wasser, it's correctly spelled. Oh, good. <laughs> and can you do that refresh on a periodic time basis? I believe you can. Yeah, indeed you can. Refresh data. We've got some configure bigger. options. Yeah. So we can have this go off yeah. regularly. I won't okay. dwell on that. Uh, I think I interrupted you earlier. Oh, well, I was wondering about that little red flag you've got at the bottom there. It's a little flag, but it's a big country. Yeah. And I'm glad you asked that, because that brings me to my second example. Now, how do I switch between documents? I can hit Shift F6, or I can just go down here to the window. And I actually have yeah. another document loaded. And yes, we have ignored China, and it's not because I'm being neglectful. It's because I want to show that you can have two data sets imported. So here we've got the original data set. But uh, because uh, our European translator could do French and German, but mm -hmm. they couldn't do Chinese, so we had to send the Excel file out to somebody else. Now, the Chinese Excel file has the same keys, but the Chinese translations are quite a bit different. And mm. you can see that. Uh, so, so this should match up with the auto-linking just fine. And let's give it a try. Automatically link all shapes on the page. We want the concept key to meet the concept shape data field. We'll hit next finish, and you can see the Chinese characters have showed up. And sure enough, that's the character for water, that's the mm. character for dog, and that's I'll the character for cat. It, I think the automatic linking think, really yeah. saves you a lot, of, uh, a lot of time if you have the right situation where you have partial data or the keys entered. Great. Is that all you want to show us today then, Chris? That wraps it up for data linking. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.